My first day in Nashville, I wrote my first hit song. I'm Jason Pinkston, and this is your Backstage Pass. Today on Backstage Pass, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Southern Illinois native and songwriting powerhouse, Kendall Marvel. That's my first day in town. I wrote a hit. That's yeah. never heard of, you know. No, that? it's very. It was. It just. That it was just one of them things. Is that the one that went to Gary Allen? It was, yeah. How'd yeah. you get it in Gary's hands? Uh, it was the guy that I wrote it with, Casey Bethard, uh, his publishing company. Uh, it uh, was A Cuff Rose, and which is Sony at the t at now. It was A Cuff Rose at the time, and a guy named Clay Bradley. Uh, I remember we was mad because we wanted Mark Chestnut, and him and him and Mark was on the same label on Decca Records, and we really wanted Mark to do it. And, and he said, man, Mark ain't going to do it, but uh, this guy named Gary Allen is. I was like, oh, man, all right, well, <laughs> whatever. And it turned out, I just done a show with Gary a while back. He has a clothing store in Nashville. And we'd done a little acoustic set over there, kind of intimate like this. And uh, I said, you care if I sing my song that you sang? And he was like, please, man. I said, because that changed my life. He said, mine too, man. It just, wow. He said, it took me to a, to a new level. So that, that was pretty cool. That is awesome. Um, when you give a song like that that's yours, that you put the feeling into and you put the words to and the melody, does it change much when you get out there and give it to somebody else? Do they change it much? Do they ask you if they could change it? Do they uh, see it different? No, they don't usually ask. I, I guess I've never, I've had a couple lines changed in the song, just uh, minor stuff that wouldn't matter. So, but I think if they were going to really change something, they would call and ask. Most of them would. Okay. But uh, most of the time, they just do it like the demo, you know. I've had a couple of things cut just off of work tapes, you know, with me and acoustic or my co-writer and acoustic or whatever. But uh, most of the time, they pretty well copy or try to, you know, because that's what, that's what turns them on to it anyway. Once right. they hear that, that, they want it to sound like that. So. How about uh, Twang? Oh. I love Twang. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now you wrote that with uh... with Jim Lauderdale mm -hmm. and Jimmy Ritchie. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that was. I mean, that that wasn't my biggest hit by any means, but that was the one that uh, you know, short straight. Yeah. I mean, when he cuts one of your songs, it was just like I'll never have that feeling again. I don't think that excited as I was that day when they. Uh, Told you that. Yeah, it was funny because they keep that hush hush. He cuts his records in Key West, and they don't let he you. Does? Yeah, they don't okay. let you know when you know. Uh, you know it's kind of in the pile, but th and you don't know if it's going to get make recorded or not. You know, and they don't let tell you till they get back, so they make you wait for a week and a half, two weeks, or whatever. Well, I know some of the guys who play on the records, and I, Eddie Bear was the drummer, and he, I said, if you hear my voice on anything, call. <laughs> so and uh, so he called. And he said, you had a song called Twang, and I was actually writing with my co-writers that day. So we ax we quit writing that day and went and celebrated. That's I for sure. Yeah. Betcha. You know, it's funny, the both times I ran into him has been in the bathroom at, a, at an award show, and I'm like, George, you know, I wrote Twang. And he's, <laughs> and he's so nonchalant. I love that song. He talks real slow, and he's real country. And, but yeah, it was awesome. It that was is awesome. so funny. Um, Joe Diffie's Tougher Than Nails. Jake Owens, you've done a couple of good ones for Jake. Yeah, I've had some great success with Jake. Met him early in his career, you know, before he, before he hit it big and wrote, I had six on that first record and had three of his first four hits. And yeah, we, we done well together. Yeah. I, uh, I wish he would write some more of his songs. Can you give us uh, any idea? Yeah, I hear it. We're a black diamond. <laughs> okay. What the hell do you think this is? A motorcycle shop? We're trying to interview over here. But now everybody's starstruck with you. No, not at I all. I mean, you had a hit with Jamie Johnson. I mean, Leanne Womack's cut it. I could go on and on, everyone that's cut your songs. And you were telling me earlier, fi over 1,500 you think you've wrote. I would think, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, a lot. What's been your favorite? Pick a favorite for me. Right where I need to be is right up there because that was, you know, a special. That's my first cut, my first hit. But uh, my favorite cut I've ever had, recording-wise, I think, is uh, that Liam Womack song. Because just because I don't get a lot of girls to do my songs, you know, that I don't normally write sensitive girl songs. She done that song so good, and it, that album is so good that Tony Brown recorded on her. And she can sing the phone book. She is. She's my hands down the best female country singer maybe ever. Jamie Johnson, you hang out with him much? Uh, not much anymore. Uh, he don't. Matter of fact, he moved back home to Montgomery and bought a golf course. So okay. he, uh, he, when he was out with Willie, he got into golfing, and uh, so he bought an old golf course that was going bankrupt. And I think he just plays golf, and you know, goes out and works on the weekends. And uh, he's an interesting couple of fellas. That's what I always say about <laughs> Jamie. Uh, he's a good dude. We we wrote uh, 
wrote Lonesome Song together. And, uh, That's right. And he told me it was, you know, uh, he'd just lost his record deal at RCA Records and uh, nobody was going to work with him. And of course, then we wrote that song and he said, well, I'm going to cut a record. And I thought, well, you know, you don't have a record deal. I said, whatever, that's fine, you know. He said, I'm going I'm to do this song. I said, well, that's fine. So he cut it and he said, I'm going to make it the title of the record. And sure enough, he did. And, and it was Grammy nominated. Grammy nominated and uh, sold almost like 1.2 million records. And along with the ever-growing list of serious artists who have cut Kendall's songs, come the obvious There's and the not-so-obvious trappings of success. You said when like I, this song did this for me, and this song did that for I, me. I actually, I used to name stuff. Like I'd have I had my tractor when I had my farm, you know, I'd like, it's Yee Haw. You know, I'd name it after a song or whatever, you know. <laughs> then I had, of course I had a couple duds. I had a song called Good People on Jeff Bates who was going to, you know, send my kids to Vanderbilt. Yeah. And, uh, we bought a front load washer and dryer off of that. You well, know, that's, that oh, so that's, that's about all it made. You know, it's like, <laughs> there's my good people washer and dryer out there. So. That is so funny. You never know. Um, we like to do a thing called um, the Fun Four. Mm -hmm. This is just all about you, okay? Mm -hmm. Ready? Sure, I guess. Biscuits or cornbread? Depends what I'm eating. Really? Yeah. What yeah. would you have biscuits with? Gravy. Okay, and then the cornbread? Beans? Uh, with fried potatoes, beans. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You are a... Franklin County boy, aren't you? I am, yes. Um, Jones or Haggard? Haggard. Haggard? Yeah, just because Haggard uh, was a songwriter and a great one on top of that. And George was too. I mean, he, he wrote songs too, but Haggard was, you know, Johnny Cash said he is the real outlaw. You know, me and, he said, me and Waylon and, and Willie, uh, we, we act like one. You know, he said, Haggard is a real, live the life of an outlaw. You ever run into him? Uh, yes, I have. Um, uh, one, one time I met him. Real quick, before I get back to my fun four, of all the people that I know you've got to meet and hobnob with, with who did you just go, oh, wow? Well, just because of my era, probably, but uh, the first time I met Hank Jr. You know, I, I, all the award shows and stuff I went to, uh, I, I never asked anybody, you know, I don't ever, it's pretty goofy to say, you know, have a picture with you. <laughs> I seen Hank was there with Kid Rock, and I just, my daughter, I took her that year, she was a senior in high school, and I said, Take a picture. I'm gonna get a picture with Hank. He's because when I was growing up, I mean, him and Randy yeah. Travis. Was, that's that's you know, what you saw. Yeah, that was my that was my. That's, I cut my teeth on that stuff. So, and uh, I I didn't know what to expect from him. You know. Was he nice? And, it was super nice. Super of course, nice. I had a bigger beard. I'm bigger than he was. You know, bigger <laughs> than him. I was like, hey man, I've never asked anybody for a picture, and I probably never will. And I had an award on that year. I was winning an award. I said, I get a picture with you, and he was absolutely. So he was great. That's awesome. And him and uh, Chris Christopherson. Oh. Was, what was, a songwriter was, there. was awesome, too. Did you Super do any, his friendly. stuff when you had a band here? I didn't do any of his stuff. I always was a fan of it. Yeah. You know, that really wasn't, uh, people wasn't coming out to hear Chris Christopherson songs at that well, time. What they want to hear, Kendall? Uh, well, that's what they wanted to hear, you know, whatever whatever was on the radio at the time, you know. <laughs> you know, in that time, you were playing here in southern Illinois. Man, you, you always brought in a, a big crowd. Crazy. I brought the crazy bunch in. You brought a little rough crowd uh -huh. sometimes, sometimes, but it was a big crowd. It was. They, it was fun. I enjoyed and it. And you know what? The other folks loved you, too. I mean, we all loved you. I think so. I think, you know, we all kind of had our... When we, if I got done early, I'd come to whoever's playing. If it was you or Samaron, whoever was playing, or Gary Jones, whoever's playing out there, we'd all kind of stop by each other's shows, you know, and, and uh, get up and sing, and, you know, or whatever. It was always fun. Oh, crunchy or creamy? Creamy. Creamy? Mm hmm Okay. How about boxers or briefs? Briefs. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Easy enough, huh? Yeah, I'm right where I need.